Hello, good morning everyone. Welcome back to another episode at Breakfast with Tiffany's. I hope you have yourself some coffee or tea this morning and will join along. I have had several requests of making how I make my mail art envelopes. Now I will tell you that I have taken every mail art class I believe that Robin Marie or the art to the fifth group has done. It is definitely well worth your money. I will not be sharing anything um, technique wise that I learned in that class because those are paid classes. Robin Marie does have a free tutorial on here on YouTube that is the scalloped tutorial. If you just, I'll try to put the link at the bottom, but it's just under Robin Marie's. It's her most recent tutorial. That is what really, I've been doing mail art for a long time, but that really took my mail art to a whole nother level whenever I um, watched that and then took her classes. So I'm going to share with you kind of Tiffany's version and how I have come up with a few different things um, to be able to show you guys. I do highly re recommend those classes if you do enjoy um, mail art because it is very beneficial. So let's go ahead and get started about the tools that you will need. I realize that everyone does not have as many craft supplies as I have. Trust me, my husband would rather me be in that boat as well. So um, when I talk about these supplies, don't be concerned if you do not have that particular supply. There is always an alter alternative that you can uh, use. Just think outside the box whenever you're looking for stuff around your house. We're going to need some paint, of course. Um, I'm going to be using my favorite colors, um, Caribbean, Apple Barrel. Um, this is Ocean Breeze, Craft Smart, Martha Stewart spring pasture this is neon pink craft smart apple apple barrel uh, apple jesus that's yellow yellow apple barrel paint and then of course just your basic white and black you will also need um some stencils i'll be using a mixture some of those will be the um hot glue stencils that I show you how to do in another tutorial that I've done. So if you haven't viewed that, I'll try to link that at the bottom as well. That's a really fun process. I'll also be using some rubber stamps. The rubber stamps I will be using will be the ones that I've actually carved. Um, you use what you have. If you don't have a stamp that you think will work, then it's okay to draw um, and doodle in those areas. That's not a problem. I'll also be using with those stamps the archival waterproof ink just to ensure that it doesn't smear or smudge as we go through the process. I will be using um, some new sprays that I got and I actually kept the package. This is um, the spray paints um, tulip fabric paint. It's a permanent paint so it works really well for what we're going to be doing because unlike dilutions and some of the other um, spray inks, this actually does not reactivate with water. So that's a win-win. Um, I got the neon selection and since I have taken them out and put them in one of my little buckets. So I'll just be grabbing these as I go depending on what color it is. You can use any spray that you want. Just make sure if you do use the dilutions ink that you um, seal it with either some type of um, cheap hairspray or any other kind of sealant that you have. You'll also need, if you're going to follow it exactly the way I do it, I use a 12 by 9 inch um, envelope in white. Now this you don't have to use this particular envelope. That's just what I have. I have a bunch of those envelopes. Ah, that tea is good this morning. Okay, I also use a 
This is just a piece of craft foam that have the little patterns. I love the little dots that it has. So we might use that, we might not. It just depends on what's tickling my fancy this morning, whether we're gonna use that or not, but that is optional. I'll also be using some gesso and a palette knife. My gesso is just about out. I'll also be using a glue stick and just a, you know, just a Mod Podge of different, um, you know, papers that you have. I have this, which I keep, um, that I can just pull from and uh, slap down. Because typically all of my mail art pieces are started the same way. Um, it just depends on you know what inspiration and how the piece kind of turns out so i don't know about you but i'm ready to get started i hope the lighting is okay this morning it is kind of dreary down here on the uh, coast of alabama but so i don't have a whole lot of natural light but we're gonna make the most out of it this morning and hopefully you will uh, learn something so if you want to follow along go ahead and get your supplies i'm going to try to keep myself in frame here so come on okay there we go auto focus there so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start which is typically how i start all of my pieces and remember these techniques can be used on art journal pages they don't have to just be about mail art it's simply just kind of an idea so what we're going to start with is just some of these printed papers i'm just going to tear them up and slap them down do not overthink this process okay it's just paper you're just putting it down it's not going to really be seen in the final project it'll just i like the way that it peeks through the paint and i'm just smoothing that out with a uh a key a room key i like using some of this uh ledger paper too i'm going to put you in uh time lapse because this video may take a while anyway and I don't want y'all to have to sit through an agonizing time watching me put paper on um, blue paper down. Okay, so I'm back. This particular piece, I'm thinking this is uh, fine. I just like to get a little bit of paper. It doesn't have to be covered from corner to corner, edge to edge, um, the way I sometimes do in my tutorials. Just make sure that your glue, adhesive, whatever kind of adhesive you're... The next step we're going to do is we're going to take a little bit of this gesso. And all you're going to do is just... is dry the next part we're going to be using the paint that we already um that i already showed you earlier in the list so i'm going to be using a catalyst if you do not have a catalyst by all means do not feel like you have to have a catalyst for whatever you have to do to slap that paint down that's all you're trying to accomplish okay is to get some coverage of the paint y'all know i love to slap that paint down so I'm going to just start with my colors here and I'm just going to rub it in different areas. And I, when I'm pulling that paint, I'm pulling it to the point where it's not really moving anymore because for this particular technique, I don't want it to be extremely thick. I'm just trying to get the color down. Okay. So that way we're not sitting here all day waiting on paint to dry. Because Lord knows I don't have the patience for that. So. And the only real thing that I do is. I think it's uh, 
Sammy Harding, a journal girl. I've taken a few of her classes. She always says, don't rock the boat or something like that. But it's pretty much just keep a balance of colors. You don't want all your green on one side. You just want to kind of to be weighted out. I really, people think like, oh my gosh, Tiffany, you could make those things so fast. But it's really not that. It's just that I cannot stress about paint. <laughs> Paint and envelopes. I'm sorry. I have too many other things going on in my life that I have to stress about. So for me, this is a way to relax and don't stress, for God's sake, about your envelope. Goodness, Lord have mercy. Leave some white space. You do not have to do this exactly how Tiffany. Remember, Tiffany is the idea girl. I like to come up with ideas. That's pretty good as far as coverage is concerned. Okay, we're back for the next step here. So what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to grab some of those stencils. And I'm going to use those for the next layer. Because we all know mixed media is about layer upon layer and building the depth that you have in, in your backgrounds and so forth. So for this particular one, I'm gonna use some Punchinella. I think that's a Crafter's Workshop stamp there. I'm gonna use my Swirly Whirly um, hot glue stencils in the kind of little diamond shaped ones. Okay, so. Okay, just like that, that's how I'm gonna put them down. I don't know what this is called because it doesn't have a color on it, but I'm just going to take a spray and I'm just going to give it a little mist, okay? I'm going to get another color. And remember, we're not stressing. Who cares if the colors mix together? It's no big deal. All right, we're going to take some of this yellow. Yellow is my mom's favorite color. And I never thought that I would like yellow and orange and stuff, but it is really growing on me. All right, let me see. How are we looking? Hmm. I think I'm going to go back with a little bit of white tea. Just a little bit. Okay, so now what I do is I take the stencil. I pull it off. Okay? Follow me so far. I hope so. Then I take the stencil and I flip it over. And I get my hands all messy. Ayana, this is for you, girl, because I know you don't like to get your hands all messy. And then I just work it around like that. And then you have these little pieces of darker colors that come off onto that. And you just move it around and just add in layers. And it's not where you can see a stencil dimension. It's where it just kind of looks like, oh, cool, what just happened there? So that's, and then I also just, because there's still some residue on them, I flip them over and put it on my under paper. In the under paper, when I say that, what that is is just the paper up under what I'm painting that's going to be put, picking up all those beautiful little things of colors that we're using. And it's going to make a really great element of some sort. Okay, so you get the gist. I like that word, you get the gist. All right, you get what I'm saying, and now your hands is all dirty, but that's okay. It's no big deal. All right, so I'm going to dry this, and then we're going to go on. So can, I hope y'all can see what I'm talking about, about how all the different kind of stencils, and then when you flip them over, how they kind of mesh together. All right, I'll be right back. Okay, so we're back. Our envelope is pretty dry. Um, it does take a while just because of all of the spray that I put on there. Um, at this point, what I, I typically do, okay, is I go ahead and get me a little crease. Because what we're going to do is we're going to fold this up, and this is where our envelope is going to become. We're going to sew down the side, okay? But I like to see where my crease is going to go, 
and I'm going to try to line this up without getting my head all in it. So I just kind of put like a little crease in there and then I open it back up. That way it kind of gives me a line as I'm going through and adding elements. How many, you know, what, how, how I want to do it, you know, so it gives you a good idea. Uh, mani making maniac as Ray Lynn said so I'm going to just go with that and go with some circles because I mean everybody can do circles if you think you can't do circles and what I'm doing I'm putting two colors on my finger at one time okay and then I'm just gonna start swirling it around swirling it around and the whole time I'm not thinking about I wonder what's how this is going to turn out. Who that that is the least of our worries, because girls, we are enjoying playing with paint just like when we were a kid, and playing with our fingers. We're not worried about is this going to be some masterpiece. For God's sake, we're not Van Gogh, so why are we concerned about that? So, um, I think I'm going to put one like right here at the crease, so it'll be a little over. Just give us a little bit of a circle there. Alright, and then I think I'm going to go back over here. And I might do like a half circle. Okay. And then I'm going to do a circle here. Another half circle. Okay. And then I'm going to go back. I think I'm going to do a circle on the flip side. So when it closes the flap, it'll kind of go together. Cause we're not through with our circles we're just going to let them dry so we don't continue to mix the colors anymore because that's about as good as mixing i want to do so i'm going to dry these and then i'll be back okay so now i am at a point where these are pretty dry not a hundred percent but they're pretty dry and now it's time to whip out the paintbrush which we have not used before today and we are going to go back and this is one of the things that i had to figure out about mixed media is you have to work past the ugly. There's always a stage where you're like, Dear Heavenly Father, I don't know what I was thinking. I don't think this is going to turn out. And then you start having those words of self-doubt. Well, that's not good for anyone. So you just have to battle through. And you just have to keep pushing through the ugly. Everybody has it. Every artist that paints... There's a stage in their painting where they think this is the ugliest thing they've ever seen. Well, maybe not the ugliest thing, but you know what I'm trying to say. So I'm just going back and brightening up my little circles here. Kind of take my finger and blend them in. They were a little darker than what I wanted. But that's no big deal because guess what? As long as they make more paint, we have enough paint, we can cover it up if we need to. So... I've covered up a good bit. All right, I'm just gonna go back with a little bit of white here, okay? And if you have too much white, guess what? You just go back and you add some more color. No big deal. For me, my painting is like therapy. It's cheaper than a therapist, and it really helps make my life better. Oh, you know what? I forgot our little circle right here. I gotta go back. I gotta go back and add a little something else. And the reason I like using the... Uh, paintbrush at this time is because I have little fat fingers and so sometimes I can be a little heavy on the color so I'll use a paintbrush just to put down a little color now I need to go back over this little sometimes if I don't like it immediately I'll put it to the side and go to something else and come back and then I'll play with it again 
And now I could swirl around with these sparkles. Swirl, boop. Okay, I could swirl around with these circles for a while, but I'm not because guess what? Y'all don't have all day to play with me, so I'm not going to. So I'm going to go and dry these, and I'm adding a little definition on this. Now, I did while I was on my little break here, um, and I turned this thing all which way. I forgot to say that, but I do. You probably realize that already. But I put some um, black paint, some heavy body black paint. I'm using golden, but you do not have to. I just got it at a really good deal on an eBay auction. And so it gives good coverage, and I'm going to use that. So what I do now is I just, it's not neat, okay? You don't have to be neat. I don't like neat. I like to be messy. So, I put my little circles and my little swirls and my little dots and all that stuff, okay? As a flower. So, I'm just going to start making... Now we're going to get our handy dandy paintbrush and we're going to go in with our black paint. And I'm just going to go and I may go in, you know, I may stay in the line. I was never good at staying in the line, so I probably will just kind of, you know, get crazy and do how I want to. But I'm, all I'm going to do is simply go back and fill in these circles. Okay, so now I have all my little black circles filled in. Anyway, I'm going to dry this and then I'll be back. Okay, so while we're waiting on this to dry, I want to make an arrow um, on this piece of paper to go on our envelope. So... So that's a real quick arrow right there. Hopefully this stuff, because what we're going to do is we're going to kind of put it like right here where the address is going to kind of be down here. Okay. Add some uh, swirls and stuff because we kind of covered those up a while ago. Take and put some uh, white paint. Because I'm going to make some little, um, I don't know what those little things are called. Some little dots inside of my flower. Alright, so now while we wait for that to dry, we're going to go back. I'm using... Um, a Uniball Signo pen. I just got this from Amazon. The Rage was all about it, and I was like, okay, let's, I got to check this out. This is freaking awesome. This pen is really, I'll never go back to using any other kind of white pen ever again because this thing is beautiful. And that's just going to make our petals pop. And now, if you wanted to, you could go back and um, I like to do little hashtags and little things like that, little marks. And now, I want to go back with my um, Stabilo All Pencil. 
just in the middle just a little bit it doesn't take very much of this okay if you do not have a stabilo all pencil then this to me is beautiful the stabilo all you'll see what it does it just gives it a little bit i'm going to activate it now with the water so just make it pop And I move around the page in weird directions because I don't want the my arm to get in there. And so... Alright, that's just one extra little um, way to add additional depth. Okay, so now at this point, I'm going to add my arrow. Here's a side I want to do it on. And so what I'm thinking is I'm going to cut off some of this under paper. I got this from uh, Robin Murray about cutting the um, colors that you've already used. And we all know I can't cut straight, so I'm not even going to. So how those colors match. And that's a good size for an address. So I'm going to because this is going to be like this. So I'm going to go ahead and get my Yoohoo glue stick and glue that down. All right. And then, all right, I'm on a hope and a prayer. I'm going to say that's dry enough so we can put this down. All right, we're gonna put this down like right here. Okay. Now, most of the time, I go back and just put some scratches of just regular um, pencil marks just because I'm a wild and crazy woman like that. And I like the scratchiness. I don't like perfection. I have to have perfection in my daily job and for with art I don't want perfection I want to be able to be a free spirit so I'm going to go back and just kind of accent this a little bit this then I'm going to go back and just do a little now you could very well because see how our envelopes going to be we could go back and stitch this and it's not going to be a problem because when I stitch the sides up guess what that just made a pocket for our contents now, if you don't, then you have two pockets. You have a pocket here. Hold on. You have a pocket here, and then you have a pocket here. So, when we stitch it up. Now, you could go back and do stitches on this around the outside, and that's not going to be a problem. Just use your sewing machine and do some stitches. Okay. And so, I'm just going to make those little swirly marks. Everything matches. Great time. Okay. Now, another element that we're going to add is I'm gonna grab my stamp here and I'm gonna use my little handmade stamp and I'm just gonna add just a little bit of pop to it, a little oomph. All right, so what do you guys think? I hope that you like this. I'm going to go and I'm going to stitch this up. I'm not going to show you how to stitch it up because God knows somebody would say, Dear Lord Heaven, how does that thing even go? Because I am not a seamstress and it would take too much for me to move my, um, my camera over there to where my sewing machine is. So I'm going to uh, go over here and stitch it up. Then I'm going to come back and that's going to be our final reveal. Okay, I'm back and I've sewed it up. So here is the front, okay? And then we would address it here. Here is the back, okay? Sewed up the sides here. And then you open it and you have one flap, two flaps. 
okay so you can use both flaps or whatever you want to but that's going to make a um, really nice it's going to make it a six by nine because we folded it in half envelope so I hope that this has given you some ideas I really really would appreciate it if you give me the thumbs up on this video and also make sure that you are subscribed to my channel I hope to be able to bring you guys more ideas and more mail art videos if there's something you like to see me try just make sure you leave it in the comments and I will give it a swirl thanks guys so much for joining in for another episode at breakfast at Tiffany's I've got to go grab some more coffee you guys have a great day